All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are actually doing our 200th mod video, which, holy crap, you gotta love the modding community for Kerbal Space Program, as these 200 mods we've looked at on the series so far have only scratched the surface of how many mods there are in this glorious game. And for our 200th mod video, I wanted to do something special and actually look back at one of the the mods that sadly I've missed from the past, and so today we're having a look at Hooligan Labs Airships by forum user Jule Scheisen, which originally I wanted to have a look at ages ago, but by the time I got around to it, the mod had actually died and was no longer being supported, but thanks to the efforts of users Dunclaw and Spanner Monkey, this work has been resurrected just this past week for the 1.1 Point two release of the game and I couldn't be happier because it's finally back and compatible with the game so let's just jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at the 15 different parts that do make up this mod now sadly I couldn't type anything into the search bar that would make all 15 show up so I actually did go ahead and do what we used to do and make a custom category now you will actually find all of these parts inside of aerodynamic but they're kind of scattered around so to have them all in one place, I just went ahead and made this. Oh, let's actually grab a command pod first and foremost for size comparison, and let's grab a Mark I lander cannon. Turn it on its side. Lovely. Now to our category down here, where again, 15 different parts that make up this glorious mod. And all of which will help you fly through the air in your own lovely airship, which is just cool. Who doesn't like airships? So the first part we're going to take a look at is actually these airship envelopes that we have right here. Now these are the basic parts for any airship. These are what you will add buoyancy to to make you float around and they come in three different sizes here. Uh, this one being the smallest, I believe this one, yes, being the largest. Holy crap, I forgot that it was out of order. And then this one being sort of the uh, <laughs> in between. As you can see, you can go from, uh, you know, decently sized to freaking gigantic, and you could probably lift an entire base with one of these darn things. But pretty cool nonetheless. Now, they could do come, as I said, in three different sizes, and sadly, though, we only have one airship end cap to actually make it rounded, which you can see right here, and it fits the smallest of them, which if we actually attach this to something... Oh, hold on. Hold on. The... Uh, Come on, attach. I'm There we go. Holding Alt eventually works. And then attach that cap. Lovely. It now has a lovely rounded front to it, making it, I guess, technically aerodynamic, but also technically not because there is no real aerodynamics to these parts, even though they're in the aerodynamics category. But, you know, just roll with it, guys. Just roll with it. Now, after these initial envelopes, the just airship envelope, the Hecto, which is the largest one, and the Octo, we then have, oh boy, a real big one, the Death Star class air envelope, which is honestly actually not that oddly sized compared to, say, the Hecto. <laughs> <laughs> and it fits quite nicely, and because it is fully rounded on all sides and a nice little circular blimp, it actually does radial attach to things, which is quite convenient, so you can build yourself a nice little uh, Hooligan Labs airship. And who doesn't want that with a giant uh, octopus on the front? Very nice. Now the next part that we have is the deployable envelope Cirrus, which is quite a cool one. Now sadly I can't show it here in the space plane hangar, but we'll go and take a look at it on the, sp on the uh, runway here momentarily. This is a deployable one. Now it looks like this, but when it starts to fill and actually become buoyant, this sort of opens up like a flower and makes a very large blimp come out the top. It's a very, very cool design to it. Now this one's sort of the exaggerated version of it. We have another Cirrus here, which is identical in size, shape, and it's a lovely flowering balloon that comes out. But this one has a more realistic buoyancy to it rather than it's the other one. So it's a more realistic buoyancy for the size. Uh, which is, uh, you know, a good thing. So there we go. We have that option there. The next two 
are my personal favorite because, well, of course, building an airship here on the planet is easy. It's, uh, you know, any of these airships, I probably should point out, have to be in an atmosphere of a planet. So building them here at the Kerbal Space Center isn't a problem. We can start sending blimps all over the world, but what if you want to send them to another planet? I mean, sure, you do have the Cirrus, which is a bit uh, aerodynamic looking and takes up a lot less space than, say, a Hecto, but it's still not exactly the best to send to another planet, and that's when we have the inflatable parachutes. Now, they come in also two sizes, the Una, is the smallest one right here. And now don't be fooled, it is deployed here in the space plane hangar, but once you get out in the world, it is inside of this little deployable thing right here. These little, uh, oh God, doors, I guess, for it will actually be closed up and this will be a flat part on the top of your ship. And you then deploy it and bam, there you go. You have a Hooligan Labs inflatable parachute which you can use to fly up into the atmosphere of whatever atmospheric planet. Now that is the Una which is the smallest of the two and then we have the Ray which as you can see here is quite a bit larger if we actually take a look at them sort of a uh, side by side ish as you can see much much larger with the Ray. Now, the next part that we have, honestly, is my least favorite of all of them. It's a K-101 rigid airship. Now, it can be deployed radially, but also does have attachment points on both ends for you to actually, you know, attach it to things. But because of its sort of old school look to it, I personally don't care for it too much. But if you like that old dirigible style, what the heck, go have some fun with the K-101. And then the next part, or some of my favorite, we have the probe-sized air envelope, which is, you know, a nice little 1.25-ish meters. Oh god, if I could get it to attach the point. There we go, lovely. Oh, I held alt as I click, so I have multiple copies. <laughs> there we go. But it is a small air envelope that won't add a whole lot of lift, but the fun part is with these is they have attachment points to them. And so you can actually use these as structural parts to build outward and then have larger envelopes on the sides. It's quite cool. I really, really do like these little things. They say they're for probe-sized air envelopes, but they work just as well on any manned airship. And like I said, with the connection points they have, they work very well as a almost structural part for expanding outward, which is quite cool. Now the next one we have is another probe-sized air envelope, but it's in a more of an oval shape rather than the round shape of the others. And uh, it's nice for just a different look to things. So very nice indeed. Now the last of the air envelopes is the rigid airship envelope dodec. This is the weirdest of them. I kind of like it though, because as you can see when you pull it out, it kind of just uh, attaches oddly to the inside of things, because it is a radial attachment, so you kind of got to spin it around. But the point of this one is to have airships with weird shapes. So if I just spin this one around here, we can build with these dodex to build oddly, very oddly shaped blimps for our, you know, whatever purpose you have in mind. So it's weird, but at the same time, I kind of like it. If you are a very artistically minded person, you could probably build something awesome with these little dodec inflatable envelopes. Quite nice indeed. Now the last two parts we have are structural in nature. This is the testing lift hub, which as you can see, not exactly the best textured at the moment, but the models, you know, pretty nice and decent. And it has attachment points on all four sides, and it's quite nice because it has the circular ones on the sides there, which are perfect for, say, these probe uh, envelopes. And then the oval shape of the top part is perfect for those sizes. So you can see how you can start to uh, get some crazy ideas of how to build with these things uh, by, you know, using these to sort of split out into multiple directions and having, 
You know, the oval ones going one way, the circular ones another, etc. Very cool. Now the other one we have here is a testing top mount, and this is just sort of a bigger sized one. Same oval one on the sides, but now you have a very much larger part right here. A very larger circular attachment point, which is good for, I guess, building off of, uh, say you have your... There we go, your command pod like that, and it's a 2.5 meter command pod. You have a nice little section for building up from or under, etc. Just however you want to design things and then building out the airship from there. Excellent, there we go. So you can start to get an idea for what sort of crazy sort of things you can build. And let's actually take a look at two ships that I've made. Now one is purely a really crappy little ship just to show you guys the Cirrus and how it does expand. Because I, I quite like how this thing works. So let's go out to the launch pad and just do that. I'll explain how you properly fly with these things on the next ship, which is a bit cooler. And let's just right click and envelope buoyancy to maximum. So you'll see this thing sort of flower outwards and this larger balloon comes out from the inside and we are going up quick because holy crap, this is a really light ship with a whole lot of buoyancy in this envelope. As you can see, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. That's a 2.5 meter size capsule there. And you can see how large this thing is getting, which, oh God, it's probably going to explode from heat damage, but oh well, say it lovey. That's a, uh, that's a big balloon. But you can, uh, you can imagine what sort of awesome structures you could build with this sort of thing. I mean, if you have a couple of them connected by a much larger superstructure, you could essentially have like a cool floating city on Duna or something like that, which would be pretty darn awesome. Now, back into the space plane hangar, and let's take a look at actually a functioning airship. I mean, this one literally just launches up into space. And, oh god, what did I call it? Hooligan Labs. I saved two? Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, no, actually. Yes, yes, that is the one that I wanted. But I forgot to save it with one part. I wanted to add, just so you guys could see, this bit to the top, and I apparently forgot to save that. There we go. <laughs> it's a very strange looking little airship, but it functions, and to power it, we have a lovely little 487S spark liquid fuel engine for all of our piloting needs. And you can see that I've used the roundish sort of probe envelopes as a structural piece. Then we have these uh, sort of uh, split off structure pieces for the other probe envelopes. Got ourselves a nice little command pod here, some solar panels for electricity. So let us go out to the launch pad and actually show you properly how to fly one of these things. Now, as you saw, I can just right click and this one menu will increase or decrease the buoyancy for all of them. So you don't have to worry about, you know, right clicking on each individual one. If I increase buoyancy on one of these things, it will start to go up. Or, of course, if I decrease buoyancy, it will start to go down. But that, frankly, is kind of an annoying way to control this thing. What's far easier is if you either toggle the UI from this button right here, or just hit the nice little blimp button that we have there. And this Hooligan Labs little UI will control it much, much better. Now this first part we have up here is the vessel percentage, which increases the potential volume of the envelope. So the higher you have this, the more buoyancy you can get from the envelopes. Because you can see we have this vessel percentage, and if I raise this up, you can see, oh lord, we're going way up, because even a little bit of buoyancy in this giant thing increases speed quickly. Oh lord. And that, of course, will increase how fast you do go up into the air. Personally, I always keep it at zero, because it's... It's easier that way. Let's revert to launch because, yeah, that took off way too quick for my liking. As I said, I prefer to keep it uh, nice and down to zero so we get a nice comfortable takeoff. Because the higher you have this go up, the more quickly you're going to lift off. 
Now, you may have briefly seen that once we did start to increase buoyancy, uh, the deployable one right here at the top actually did open up, but this is quite cool. This is why I like sending this one to other planets, because it's nice and internalized. But if we start to increase the buoyancy, it will open up, which my preferred method of increasing the buoyancy and controlling these ships is through the altitude control. Now it's defaulted as off, but we can hit it to on. And there we go. That envelope will start to open up. We have this lovely Hooligan Labs blimp. And bam, there we are. We have our lovely, lovely little ship. Now you'll see here that we have it at zero meters per second in vertical velocity. This is how you control this thing far more easily than right clicking and upping or lowering the buoyancy, or of course increasing or decreasing the vessel envelope size. Instead, I can just say, well, I want it to raise up by only 0.5 meters per second, and it will continue to go up by 0.5 meters per second. So I'll continue to raise up in the air at this speed, and I can decrease it down by 0.1 meters per second intervals until we're back down to zero to get us to a nice, lovely hovering or floating, whatever you want to put it. Now, if we hit the double plus sign here, we will go up by 0.5, oh, actually 0.4 apparently. Hmm, slightly different. But there we go, we'll raise up by one meter per second and we'll start increasing that. You can see our surface velocity is roughly a meter per second. It kind of goes up and down by 0.2, but overall it works very well. And you can do the same for going down. We can then start to descend the craft by going down by 0.2 meters per second, and our ship will begin to go back down to terra firma. But we want to fly this baby, so let's keep it up at about... Uh, yeah, it's 0.5 meter per second rate of climb, which is quite nice, I'd say. And activate my engine. And away we go. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly the easiest to control with uh, this tiny little engine. It's not the greatest of gimbling. But bam, we are now going at a vertical velocity of 0.5 meters per second and forward at about 20-ish or so. Let's actually lower this thing down. It's kind of hard to control a blimp. So, uh, yeah, you can't exactly turn on a dime with this thing. You've actually got to rotate it in multiple directions to get this thing to turn. But you know what? It works. It works. It works. And, yeah, we are flying a blimp. <laughs> How could you not love that? It's just, it's just fun. We have an airship. And imagine, say, the inflatable parachute taking that to Duna, perhaps. And then once you're there, safely landed on the planet, you just open it up, start adding buoyancy, and bam, you're now flying around in that planet's atmosphere with a lovely, lovely airship. And that's that's just fun. I'm so glad that Hooligan Labs got resurrected because it's it was such a cool mod that, quite frankly, I'm sad that I missed for so long. But oh well, it is back here now and will make a presence in my games in the future. And yeah, it's just fun. So if you'd like to take a look at this thing for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description, as always. But definitely go give it a try, have some fun, fly around with some blimps, and if you make some crazy freaking blimps out there, I would love to see them, so send me a tweet or a Facebook or whatever, as I would be intrigued to see what sort of things you guys could create with this. But yeah, that is going to be it for today's episode. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next, which will be 201. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one!